It is conference championship week of the 2024 season here in the Iceman Coach Mo Dynasty. And last week, I went ahead and, and just played through week 15. The only game that was played was the Army Navy game. So I just decided to lump that in with conference championship week. Um, but so what we'll do, uh, we'll look at the top stories, but I'm also going to look at the, the results from week 14 so that we can kind of. Um, uh, see a couple things that happened that sort of changed the landscape of of the uh, of the season, but uh, first of all, here we go again. USC and Cal meet again for all the marbles in the Pac-12. USC, they were the team that I guess didn't want it the least in the nor uh, Southern Division of the Pac-12, and they'll be taking on number three Cal. Um, so if USC, USC. <laughs> It would almost be kind of amusing that they could lose five games and then still end up in uh, in the Rose Bowl. Uh, but that's that's the situation is they will get ready to take on Cal. Uh, Cal, meanwhile, is 11-1, and one, and they have a chance to go to the college football playoff, but not if they stumble at this hurdle. Uh, then you've got North Carolina. They've climbed back into the top 25. They'll take on number five, Clemson. Obviously, the Tigers have a shot of getting in the college football playoff, and they are one of the best teams in the nation. You can see A-pluses across the board. So, uh, but again, they have to pass that test. Oklahoma and Nebraska in the Big 12. Nebraska, their first year back in the Big 12, and they are in the championship game. They will take on the Sooners. Probably neither of these teams can get into the playoff, but they can get into the top 10. And um, uh, clearly, Oklahoma has the talent advantage there. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, title fight in Cincinnati. Navy will take on the Bearcats this week for the American Football Championship. Navy coming off of there. I believe it was a win against Army. We'll look at it real quick just so that you can know how that game turned out. Yeah, they beat Army 56-24. So uh, then we've got this rematch. They meet again. Who will win round two between number six Florida and number one Texas A&M? Uh, Florida with a win. you got to imagine that they would jump into the college football playoff. Texas A&M is number one. Florida is number six. Uh, earlier in the season, it was Texas A&M who got the win against Florida just a couple weeks ago, actually. 31-27 was the final there. Texas A&M scored, I remember, with like four minutes to go uh, to win the game. Um, and they also are the only team to beat us. So uh, I guess we kind of would, uh, you know, would be a little easier to pill to swallow that loss if Texas A&M did go on to win the national championship. Uh, Florida, they have uh, have a couple losses. The Texas A&M loss, they also lost earlier in the year to LSU, so um, that is why they are looking right now on the outside looking in to the college football playoff. Uh, another rematch as Michigan and Iowa will square off for the Big Ten championship game. Michigan right now sits inside the college football playoff. Uh, we'll look at the uh, earlier results. So it was, again, two weeks ago. Uh, Michigan got an overtime win against Iowa. So uh, that should be another interesting matchup there to see if the Wolverines can hang on to their playoff spot. Um, positive no. The Army-Navy game, I guess one of, their, one of the players was recognized as player of the week, but it was the only game, so of course they were. Uh, the Maxwell names its three finalists, and Haynes King of Texas A&M is one of those. He has had a pretty good season. I mean, not as many passing yards as last year. Passing-wise, he did not have as good a season as last season. Um, and but he has, I guess, he's ran for a lot more. Uh, he's, you know, if he has a good SEC championship game, he could have a thousand yards going into the awards. Um, he does have seven rushing touchdowns as well. So Haynes King, obviously kind of a dual threat guy. Um, so that's the top stories. Let's look at how some of these other games went in week 14. I'm just going to look at the top 25. Um, because most of the, obviously the big games will uh, be top 25 games. Of course, we beat U UTSA. Texas A&M, or sorry, West Virginia beats Kansas 34-21. Uh, Kansas could have gotten to 10 wins. They still can with the bowl result, but they, uh, you know, it still would have been good for them, for their program to get that 10th win, but uh, they fall. Nebraska, meanwhile, in the Heroes game, beats Iowa 31-21. Washington crushes Washington State in the Apple Cup 45-6. And we saw the uh, Civil War result uh, in uh, the game last week. Uh, Penn State, meanwhile, crushes Indiana, Cincinnati over Houston. And Arkansas, this was one of the big results, uh, ends their regular season. So it looks like they're in the college football playoff. They, they destroy LSU 40-24. to 
Alabama, meanwhile, beats Auburn 31-27. Tide will go um, uh, to, well, they'll go to a major bowl, but obviously they're out of the college football playoff. They're out of the SEC championship game. Florida dominates Florida State 52-17. BYU over Tulsa. Uh, Oklahoma 49-17 over Texas Tech. Big win for the Sooners there. And in your typical Big Ten uh, slugfest, Wisconsin 10-6 over Purdue. Uh, Michigan wins the big game 38-23 over Ohio State. Uh, Texas crushes Memphis 56-12. Clemson over South Carolina 43-24, dropping the Gamecocks out of the top 25. North Carolina beats Duke in that uh, in-state rivalry. Uh, Texas A&M secures their spot in the college football playoff with a 41-17 win over Missouri. And Tennessee knocks off Vanderbilt 34-28, and that uh, keeps Vanderbilt from having a chance of getting into the college football playoff. They were right on the cusp uh, until the Vols, uh, their in-state rivals, uh, end that dream. So that's a look at the uh, kind of the the story of Week 14, um, looking at the top 25. Texas A&M 1, Arkansas 2, Cal 3, Michigan 4. Meanwhile, Clemson 5, Florida 6, Alabama 7, Texas State, sorry, 8. And we got four first place votes. That's interesting. Oklahoma 9, Oregon 10, Nebraska 11, Vanderbilt 12, Penn State 13, Texas Tech 14, Iowa 15, West Virginia 16, Washington 17, Texas 18, Tennessee 19, LSU 20, Kansas 21, Cincinnati 22, Wisconsin 23, BYU 24, and North Carolina 25. That's the coaches' poll. Looking one last time before the uh, conference championship games at the playoff rankings, it is A&M, Cal, Arkansas, and Michigan as it stands. Arkansas is in the clubhouse. Texas A&M, Cal, and Michigan all have conference championship games, as do Florida and Clemson. So five of these six teams play this week. Uh, and I don't believe none of them play each other. Well, te- sorry, Texas A&M and Florida do play each other. So you got to imagine that a one of those at least are going to be in. Uh, and then Arkansas is in. So two spots are kind of uh, open for these other teams. So we'll see. Um, we'll see how it shakes out this week with Conference Championship Week. It's pretty hard to imagine us getting in. For one, you, either Texas A&M or Florida is in. Arkansas is in. And um, even if Michigan loses, Clemson loses, Florida loses, we're not going to leapfrog Alabama. So it's hard to imagine all of these teams, you know, enough of these teams losing for us to jump in. So we're kind of, but that's okay, right? We're in the top 10. Big goal right now is winning our second conference championship. And to do that, we are going to be taking on Coastal Carolina. We've played them already. It was a dominant 63 to 14 win. Coastal Carolina couldn't get anything going. Um, But we will have a look at their roster here. Check them out one more time before we play the game. Casey Clawson spent a couple of years with Coastal Carolina as the offensive coordinator, and he helped to build what is probably the most balanced roster in the Sun Belt Conference. As we look at James Miller, he is a pocket passer. uh, So, you know, he's not going to reel off big, giant runs. Uh, He will take off occasionally, probably pick up a few yards here and there just because it's a scheme. They run a multiple scheme. But um, he's going to be most dangerous when he's in the pocket. The running back, they've got a good stable of running backs. Beasley, Connolly, and uh, Simeon Charles are three very good runners. Beasley is more of your power runner. And then Connolly and Charles are both speed guys. So um, Beasley will will kind of wear you down. And then, you know, then you're, you know, you're too tired to chase Connolly and Charles all around the field. So. Uh, you look at the acceleration, though. Even on Beasley, is 99, right? So they've got, I mean, those. that's a good staple of running backs for the Sun Belt Conference. Fullbacks, eh, not so great. Brett King is a 65. Receivers, uh, Clawson set them up with a very speedy receiving core. Anthony Riley, Ike Mays, and uh, Ricky Whitehead all have you know, 94, 95, 96 speed. Good acceleration. Um, agility, you know, Mays is pretty agile, but... Uh, yeah, that, the others are not as agile, but they can get to their top speed quick. So if they, you know, if they get the ball in their hands, they're go- we're gonna have problems. Um, I, it's really a, kind of we're very fortunate in the first game that they did not hurt us more than they did. Um, the tight end Logan Malden is actually their fourth receiver, uh, but then you know, fit number five Pierre McCoy is also uh, a speedy 
uh, guy that uh, Clawson helped to bring in. So this is a you know this receiving core is you've got you've got a pocket passing quarterback, one of the better uh, in in the Sun Belt, and then four fast receivers uh, and a tight end who obviously is gonna make the tough catches. So um, yeah, and Molden is a 90 overall tight end. Uh, even the backup 79 is not bad. As you know, Sun Belt Conference that's pretty good. Malden is a guy that could start on a lot of Power Five teams. Uh, offensive line, left tackle Peterson is a 79, left guard an 84, center an 86, right guard an 85, and the right tackle is an 85. So they are, again, this is a balanced uh, roster that they have. The left tackle obviously is, you know, quote unquote, the weakness, but, you know, that's not, you know, against our defensive line, uh, he should be able to hold his own. Meanwhile, defensively, and this is where we could have issues. Antonio Holland left in is an 86. His backup, Bailey, is an 85. And then even the third guy, Johnson, is an 85. On the right side, Miller is a 93. And then they've got, obviously, the same two backups there. So uh, all, you know, from the end, which they run a 4-3 defense, the ends are, are going to be a challenge for us. Uh, their nose tackle, Livingston, is an 87. Um, there is a bit of a drop-off. You know, Obviously, he's the only defensive tackle in the top four on the depth chart. But... Um, he is going to be tough to handle, right? Uh, yeah, I, you know, you can't. Unfortunately, NCAA football doesn't let you like assign double teams. Um, so I guess I have to hope that my guys do it naturally. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Though he's obviously very good. Left outside linebacker is an 88. Middle linebacker is an 84, and then on the right an 82. So again, very balanced. The left outside linebacker Betty, he is going to be. Uh, he, uh, he's a run stopper, right? And so that does kind of work in our favor because we're more of a passing team. So that means he, with his 76 speed, is going to have to try and cover uh, our receivers on the inside. <clears throat> um, and in the secondary, their two corners, starting corners, are good, 86-82. But then there is, again, a drop-off to Burks to Castillo. That was an issue that we just never did get resolved uh, was cornerback depth. Um, but, you know, the, these first two guys, 97-94 speed. So they're going to be able to cover us on the outside. Uh, free safety is an 82, and he's got 94 speed. Uh, strong safety, an 83 with 93 speed. So they, you know, this this team is fast. This is the f- like overall. This is the fastest team in the Sun Belt Conference. Uh, kicker Anderson is an 86. Punter Landry is a 96. So uh, this is one of the few teams that will have an advantage of on over us in the kicking game. So, um, you know, when you just kind of whatever, look at it, oops, look at it uh, objectively, Coastal Carolina is the better team, and, and that shows, right? B-plus is across the board. Um, statistically, however, we uh, lead, we are better in every category except rushing offense, which is no big surprise. That's a scheme thing. And then turnover difference. Um, so today, uh, we'll see if we can once again play above our heads like we did uh, in that first game in Conway. You look at the uh, our schedule, obviously, uh, this was the win. Oh, that was a home game. Sorry, it was in San Marcos. Um, today's will be in San Marcos as we are the higher seed. Uh, we, we had the better record. Um, 69-14. I, I said 63. It was actually 69-14. to We just could not be stopped that day, and Coastal couldn't get anything going. So um, I, c- I can't imagine that the result's going to be that one-sided. Especially the way our defense has been playing as you look at these last three weeks. They've we've kind of struggled. Um, we got it done, but uh, they've had some issues. And you, this, we cannot, we will not be able to survive struggling against this Coastal Carolina Chanticleer offense. Meanwhile, the Chanticleers uh, have, of course, that loss. Their only other loss was last week to Appalachian State. They were upset at home by the Mountaineers. Probably looking ahead uh, to our game. So... Uh, that is the situation. So without any further ado, let's get this thing going. And here we look at the, uh, the numbers. Uh, again, nothing, you know, it's, they're obviously a very good team. You look at their defense, um, it's 40th, which is not bad, but when you play mostly a Sun Belt schedule, uh, probably the number there is, those numbers should be higher. I don't know, but like we're ninth. <clears throat> so, uh, so maybe that's like a you know even though they are balanced across the board on defense maybe that's you know kind of our uh, our hope there is that their statistically their defense has not performed super well although I bet if you compared the last few weeks we would not compare very well either um, our top players Dukes Miller and Cunningham that's interesting 
that can't be right, but that's what it's showing. Uh, top players for them is their punter Landry, their kicker Anderson, and their center Turner. Injury report, we have no injuries. Uh, theirs is Betty, the left outside linebacker, has a broken tailbone, but he is probable, so he'll play. So here we are in San Marcos. It's a rematch, one of several rematches this week in conference championship games as Texas State at 11-1, 9-0 in the Sun Belt Conference, will play Coastal Carolina, who is, of course, 10-2 uh, and 7-2. And and is that right? 10-2, 7-2 uh, in the Sun Belt. Uh, yeah, there you go. So, uh, you know, we, we've come here to the end of the season, on, and conference bragging rights are at stake. Who is going to get to fly the Sun Belt champion flag at their uh, campus for a year? It's been at Texas State this season. Can Coastal Carolina wrestle it out of their hands and bring it back to Conway? Uh, last game, Texas State put on probably their best performance in their school history in a 69-14 win over Coastal Carolina. Coastal Carolina wants to prove that that was a fluke. They want to come out today and, and prove that they are the best team in the Sun Belt Conference and that that game was an anomaly. Texas State, meanwhile, they're looking at a a big time New Year's Day bowl game. It was a New Year's Six bowl game, uh, but they'll have to win today to make that happen. So second and one, Felder here looks to the sideline, takes the snap. He's in a little trouble. Throws to his left and it's intercepted. Felder's first pass of the game is picked off. He had he had this problem last week, and today he overshoots his man. He had a receiver open. It was Philip James in the flat. And Coastal picks it off. Miller this time, four wide, hands off again. And Beasley this time can't get past the line of scrimmage, so it'll be fourth down. Second and two. Felder now needs the 48-yard line of Coastal Carolina. He's looking to throw. Moves around the pocket a little bit. He finds Craig Miller. That will be a first down. That's a 12-yard pickup. So third and 20 from the 48. They need, obviously, the 28 uh, receiver in motion. Down, or Felder with the pass. It's complete to McDowell again. He will go. Oh, he is one yard short. What will what will Texas State do? Texas State to go for this on fourth down. This could be a huge mistake. Rather than taking the points. And it is James. Hit immediately after getting his hands on the ball. He'll lose two yards. And that'll be first down for Coastal Carolina. So Miller this time with four receivers. From the shotgun, he will throw. Across the middle, it's complete, but Malden will only get 12. He needed 17. Good throw and catch there by Miller. And that's a new school record for Logan Malden. Uh, receptions in his season, I guess. Receiving yards. Second and 10 from the 37. Miller to throw. Across the middle, that one is complete to Josh Hall, who... Had to reach back to make the catch. He'll pick up 11. So the Bobcats now at the 48. Uh, Felder is in trouble and he's sacked. Sacked for an eight yard loss. From the 40 now, Miller, or Felder, excuse me, takes the snap. And again, again, the left guard. Who is my left guard? He is having an atrocious game. Twice, two plays in a row. He lets, he lets the tackle through. And now it's third and 26. Third and 26 from the 31. Felder hands it off to Philip James. He'll get a lot of yards, but not near enough. 17 on that carry. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. And we see the lockdown defense right now. Coastal Carolina is absolutely... Uh, well, I guess you can't say shutting down, but they have stopped Texas State's offense when they needed to. From the gun again is Miller. He's got four receivers, although Malden is in the slot there. Back to throw. Pocket holes. Throws to his right. It's complete. That is Malden. Or sorry, no, that's Ike Mays who picks up 28 yards. Second down and 10 now for Coastal Carolina. Three receivers to the left. Play action. Across the middle. That is complete to Mays again. And he'll have a first down. He picks up probably about 15, 14 on that catch. Miller, receiver's in tight. Drops the throw. Throws long on his right. He's got a man wide open. That is that is Ike Mays. Picks up 26 yards. So Miller here as they are closing in on the goal line. Swings the pass out to Mays again. 
Oh, sorry, that's Ricky Whitehead. He'll have the first and goal at the two. So third and goal. Can the Bobcats make a stand? Four receivers. Hand off. No, Miller will keep it. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown. The Chanticleers strike first here in the first quarter. Near the end of the first quarter, actually. Can the Bobcats finally get a get points against this Chanticleer offense? We'll see on this drive, I guess. First and ten, Texas State now playing from behind. This is a position they're not used to. The handoff to James up the middle. He'll pick up 12 yards on the carry. And that's the end of the first quarter. Coastal Carolina holds a 7-0 lead. They're looking for payback. Texas State needs to get their offense going here if they want to uh, repeat their victory from earlier in the season. First and ten, Felder to throw across the middle that's complete Craig Miller on the quick slant that will be a first down new school record for Ben Felder passing yards in a season breaks Clark's record from last year so third and ten Felder will throw across the middle that's complete to Hall that will be a first down big catch there by Josh Hall Third down and two. They need the one for the first down, but obviously the goal line would be preferable. And Chauncey Carter, touchdown vulture, comes in on the three-yard carry. And we now have game on here in San Marcos. Texas State answers the Coastal Carolina touchdown drive. Third and eight. Miller to throw. It's a screen and knocked away by Ramzor. Texas State had the tight coverage in. Third and two from the 45. They need the 40, yeah, but they need the 48. And the pass is complete to Horn for seven yards. That will be a first down. From the Coastal Carolina 48, Felder drops back. Quick screen out to Hall. Hall makes a little move, and he will get the first down. Ten yards on that screen pass. Third and ten for Texas State. Felder to throw. And it was a screen. The man was there, so now he's in big trouble. He does throw it. Oh, Dixon makes the catch, and he's just short of the first down, but there is a flag. Pass interference. Offense. So they decline the pass interference. It'll be fourth down. So the Bobcats elect to kick the field goal this time rather than go for it. See if Dukes can hit this 45, 46 yarder. The kick is up, and he got it. Texas State takes the lead 10 to 7 here in the second quarter. So Miller from the gun with three receivers to his left. Throws to his left and Ricky Whitehead open for a 13-yard catch. Miller trips to his left again. Handoff this time to Beasley. Beasley gets around the left side. He's in space. Cross midfield, he gets to the Texas State 49. Picks up 16 yards. 35, they need the 40. Miller to pass. He's in trouble. He's hit as he throws. Pass falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Big stop there for the Bobcats. So Felder now, chance to increase the lead for the Bobcats on this drive. From the 20, handoff up the middle is James. He, with a big run, gets 15 yards. Third and four. Felder to throw. Across the middle. That is complete as McDowell wide open. Just a slant route right across the middle, and Coastal Carolina didn't have a defender there. McDowell makes the easy catch, gets the first down. First and 10 from the 41. Felder to throw. Carolina blitzes. They pick it up, and now Felder's going to run, and he'll get the first down. He picks up 13 on the carry. Second and 10. Felder to throw again. Throws it to Miller on the slant. Complete for the first down. Now that'll put them down about the 12-yard line. They're at the 14 here. Texas State on the move. Bobcats throws it into the corner of the end zone. He's got Horn. That's a touchdown. 14 yards out. Texas State will now uh, push their advantage to two scores with the extra point. And handoff to Beasley around the right. He will get the first down. 
15 yard carry by CJ. And Miller to throw. Across the middle, he's got a man. That's Whitehead. That's a big gain. He picks up 23 yards on the carry. Whitehead lost his man there. And Miller to throw. He is hit and sacked. Back at the 50 yard line, loses eight on that carry. Bobcats, Blitz, they came heavy. And Coastal Carolina couldn't pick it all up. Big time play for a big stop there. Ben Felder, um, uneven performance, but right now he's got he's got the Bobcats with 17 points and one touchdown pass. He'd have the one pick in the first quarter. Texas State on this drive, first and 10. Maybe going to try to increase their lead. And on the wheel route, he finds Chauncey Carter, who will get out of bounds. 13 yards on that catch. First and 10. Felder to throw. Coastal Carolina blitzes. They pick it up. He swings it out to the left. That is Horn, who shakes off a defender. He'll get past midfield, picks up 18 yards on that catch. Texas State, they're smelling blood right now on offense. Texas State realistically needs the 38. Felder is in trouble, hit, sacked. Again, the Texas State offensive line failed to pick up a lineman. So that is the end of the first half. Texas State, after Coastal Carolina struck first, Texas State has taken the lead and they now lead by 10 going into halftime they've kind of got things turned around on both sides of the ball early on they were struggling you had an interception you had a turnover on downs but the last last few drives texas state has moved the ball pretty well uh, with the exception being the last drive where on third and 10 felder was sacked uh, the issue for texas state is they've got to pick up the coastal carolina defenders on the offensive line um, too many, too often, the offensive line has gotten beat not by a, you know, well drawn up blitz, just a guard or the center missing their assignment, and a defensive lineman getting through to make the sack uh, or to make the play on the running back. So, Texas State, if they can shore that up, they're in pretty good shape. Meanwhile, Coastal Carolina, uh, they've probably tried to run the option too often with Miller. They need to let Miller sit back and throw the ball when he has. He's been effective, as you can see, 136 passing yards. But they only have 16 yards rushing, and that's because of all of the, the uh, negative plays when they've tried to run that option. So if they just take that out of the playbook, i got to imagine Coastal Carolina will be able to move the ball and score and um, make this a game again. Um, but uh, second half coming out, they will have the ball. Will the Shanta clears. That'll be their chance to make their adjustments and uh, possibly bring the Sunbelt Conference Championship back to Conway. So... We'll see how the second half goes, If uh, which teams make the better adjustments. Third and 11, Miller needs the, what, the 29? He's going to throw to his left. It's complete, but Riley is knocked down immediately. He only gets one yard. That's his first catch of the game. But that sets the school record, apparently. Third and six, they need the 47. Felder will pass, throws to his right. It's complete, and he'll be just short. Josh Hall can't quite get to the line. It'll be fourth and one. Fourth down and one. The Bobcats are going to go for this. Handoff to Carter. He gets up the middle. Big gain for Chauncey. 14 yards. That will be enough for the first down. Third down and eight. Again, the Bobcats need the 25. Actually, a little, they need about the 24. The handoff to Mitchell loses two yards, so that'll make it fourth down. <coughs> so Dukes is out to attempt a 52-yard field goal. This would give the Bobcats a 20-7 lead. Snap the hold. The kick is up. It looks long enough, and it's good. That is a huge kick there by Dukes. Big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games, and that is a big play there by Dukes. Third down and 10. Handoff. Ooh, Connolly dropped immediately after the handoff. So Coastal Carolina really having trouble on offense right now. They've Their first couple drives in the second half have been abysmal. First down and 10 from the 46. Texas State will hand it off. Carter gets it across midfield and gets the first down. Third and one. Three receivers, two backs. Felder hands it off. Mitchell just gets back to the line, no more, so that will make it fourth down. Fourth and one. Texas State to go for it. Handoff, Carter up the middle. Big hole, big run. He gets 14. That will be a first down. Third down and two. 
Felder makes an adjustment. Handoff up the middle. Mitchell gets the first down this time. Mitchell's had some had some struggles today, but he does get the first down there to make it first and goal. Texas State now first and goal from the five. Felder to pass. Across the middle. That's complete. That's a touchdown. That's Jacob Horn with a big catch. Gets it across the goal line. And Texas State now with a three-score lead late in the third quarter. Ben Felder, second half, been pretty efficient. Not a lot of yards. Miller across the middle. That is complete to Mays. He gets the first down. Miller again. Three receivers out to his right. He's going to hand this one off to Beasley again. Beasley, big hole. He bits 12 yards on that carry. Coastal Carolina now well into Texas State territory. Felder, or no, Miller, sorry. Tries to run the option, and there again... That option play just has not worked for Coastal today. Miller is not an option quarterback, and he's hit immediately, loses yards. Miller with an empty backfield on this play. Second and 14. He's going to, nope, he's going to try to run, but he's hit immediately. Looks like it was a designed quarterback draw. And Brian Wright there for his sixth TFL of the game. So Miller needs the 27 for the first down. They're going to run a screen, swings it out to Beasley who is hit and loses four yards. That makes it fourth and 22. Last play of the third quarter coming up here. Felder takes the snap and oh, throws a pick. That was just a poor play from the offensive line created that situation. They let, first of all, they let a defender through and to get pressure on Felder, who then throws a poor pass right to the waiting hands of the defensive end. And that will be the way the third quarter ends. Texas State leads 27-7, but with that turnover, Coastal Carolina will now have the ball deep in Bobcat territory with a chance to get themselves back into the game. So Miller here, two receivers to each side. He'll drop the throw. He is sacked. Miller sacked on the first play of the drive. And so now, Coastal Carolina has to take a step back. Empty backfield with four receivers to the right for Miller. He's going to throw. Swings it out to his right, and it's intercepted. That, that I could see that coming as Texas State takes it right back. After the interception, they get a sack, and then Weber with an interception and gives the Bobcat offense back the ball. Third and five from the 39. Felder to throw. Rolls to his right. Cross the middle. That is complete to Hall. And that will be nine yards. That's enough for a first down. So third down and ten. Felder looking to keep this drive alive. And he throws it to McDowell who has to come back and make the catch. But he only gets a yard. So that'll be fourth down. So Duke's out to attempt his third kick of the game. This will be about a 47 yarder. Give the Bobcats a 30 to 7 lead. The kick is up and he got it. 30 to 7 now. Texas State leads. And they have one hand on the trophy at this point. Coastal Carolina. The three scores can still get them even. And we look at this lockdown defense. Uh, it's been more locked down for Texas State, although Coastal Carolina has made some big plays on D. So an empty backfield here for Miller. Looking to make something happen. Texas State blitz, but the Chanticleer has picked it up, and he gets the pass complete to Malden for 18. Empty backfield again. Miller to pass. Pocket holes. He goes long to the right. It's complete. That's Pierre McCoy for 20 yards. Miller to throw to his left. It is caught, and this, oh, and it gets a block, and McCoy picks up 16. Miller takes a snap. Back to throw. It's a screen, but Miller is sacked. That'll make it fourth and goal. So Coastal to kick a field goal here. This is a curious choice. Uh, they would, this would not do much. They still need three touchdowns. The kick is good. I guess they want to try to get the onside kick. They are lined up for the onside kick. We'll see if they can recover this. And Josh Hall makes the catch. He gets the ball up past the 40. And receiver in motion. Felder back to throw. Swings it out to Horn, who makes the catch. He'll get the first down, down to the 24. A 15-yard reception for Horn. 
That's his eighth catch. Puts him up to 79 yards on the day. Meanwhile, Ben Felder has 292 yards passing. From the 24 now is Texas State. Ben Felder to throw. Throws it long to the left, and it is complete. Craig Miller makes the catch. A tough catch. The ball must have floated right over the defender's helmet. So first and 10 from about the 12. Felder throws it long to the right. He's got a man. Touchdown. That's Brandon Burgess. And Texas State puts the final nail in the Carolina coffin. The Sun Belt Conference Championship Trophy will remain in San Marcos as this will make the lead 37 to 10. And that would mean Coastal Carolina would need four touchdowns to win. Third and one. Handoff. Nope. Miller's going to keep it. He is hitting the backfield. And Coastal will be, it'll be fourth and three. Got to imagine they'll go for it. And it's the victory formation. Looks like Felder's going to take a knee and let the clock roll out. This final seconds tick away. And that is the game. Texas State has won the 2024 Sun Belt Conference Championship. Coastal Carolina offense, for the second time, could not get anything done against this Bobcat defense. Earlier in the season, they could only muster 14. Today, only 10. And even though the Texas State offense had a little bit of a more difficult time in this game, they were still able to ring up 37 points on this Coastal Carolina defense. This is an impressive win for a Texas State team against a Coastal Carolina roster that, as we saw, was very balanced, very talented across the board. And so San Marcos is once again home to the Sun Belt Conference champions. Now Texas State looks ahead. As they hoist the trophy, they think about what their bowl destiny is. Are they going to go to uh, the Fiesta Bowl? That was a bowl that they were projected for. We'll see. It kind of depends on how the college football playoff shakes out. But what a win for this Bobcats team, uh, beating what was arguably the most talented team in the Sun Belt Conference. Kind of establishes their place atop the Sun Belt right now. It's two years in a row. They have Coach Casey Clawson has led this team to the conference title. And it kind of makes you think that the sky could be the limit for this team. Uh, and the other question is how long will Clawson stay here in, in uh, San Marcos? Has he accomplished all that he can? We'll see. We'll see if uh, some other schools come calling. But this was definitely a big win. Look at the team stats. We see first down, 25 to 14. Total offense, only four, oh, 435 yards. That's that, that's a lot, but it's not. Uh, Texas State prefers to be closer to that 500 number uh, or above it. Um, they did have 110 yards rushing, which is pretty good for them. Uh, had 325 yards passing. The big big problem today was the turnovers. Two turnovers uh, made it difficult uh, for Texas State on a couple of occasions. They did get one turnover themselves, though, to kind of negate the one that they gave up, one of the two that they gave up. Uh, third down conversions, 8 of 17. There, there you see Coastal Carolina's failure. 2 of 12 on third down. Now, a lot of that was because they uh, set themselves up with negative plays. You look at their rushing yards. This is a team that normally, you know, they have a very good rushing game. On uh, Today, they were ended up with negative 1. They tried to run the option too much with James Miller, who is not an option quarterback. And that, obviously, Texas State was ready for that and shut that down. And uh, they, you know, they finally turned to the passing game, but you know, the 21 of 28 for 231 yards, uh, you know, those are not bad numbers. You just need to, you needed to throw it more and run that option less. And probably those runs by Beasley and and uh, Connolly would have been more effective. But as it stands, uh, Texas State on uh, the defense, they were the probably the real heroes of the game today. Um, not a lot in the rest of these statistics here. Um, yeah, so now we'll look at the player stats. Felder, 39 to 56. Big day. Three touchdowns. He did have the two picks. But, uh, you know, they ended up being not too costly. Uh, the running game, Philip James had 69 yards before he went out with an injury. Um, Mitchell would come in. Carter would come in and pick up 43 yards on four carries. Mitchell would uh, chip in with 13 yards. Uh, Carter also had a touchdown run. Uh, Felder, with his sacks, uh, would lose 18 on the day. 
Looking at the receiving, we spread the ball around pretty well today. Could have been better. Horn, uh, eight catches for 79 with two touchdowns. Miller caught nine for 79. Uh, Josh Hall, eight catches for 62 yards. And then who's the fourth? McDowell only made three catches. He had a couple drops. The drops hurt him. Uh, if he makes those catches, you know, obviously those numbers would be better. Um, defensively, great game by the defense. Nixon, nine tackles. Uh, and then TFLs, Brian Wright, six TFLs. He was just, he was, he absolutely shut down that option attack. Uh, Nixon had three, Johnson had three, Manuel, Bailey, Weber each had two. Uh, then Weber also had the interception. Uh, pass deflections, Remzor had the one. Uh, no fumbles forced or recovered. But uh, yeah, big win. So Texas State is your 2024 Sun Belt champion. Make sure you tune in the next episode when we find out what their bowl fate is.